So I'm Katie Shear, and I had Henry Cartier-Bresson as my artist. He was born in 1908 and passed away in 2004. He was a pioneer in the field of photojournalism. And he's known for his street photography that was shot in Europe beginning in the 1930s. He's well known for capturing candid, everyday moments. And to capture these moments, he was known for painting the shiny parts of his camera black, thus avoiding drawing attention to himself. For him, photography was acknowledging the significance and importance of an event and being able to express it through a strong composition. Behind the Guerre Saint-Lazare from France, 1932, was named one of Time's 100 most influential photographs of all time. And Cartier-Bresson believed that technique is important only insofar as you master it in order to communicate what you see. Your own personal technique has to be created and adapted solely in order to make your vision effective on film. The creative part of photography is very short. A painter can elaborate, a writer can, but as it's given, we have to pick that moment, the decisive moment, it is there. Ah, I've seen this, I've been there, I've seen that. He was known for taking decisive photographs and capturing moments of everyday life. So five things that we can learn from Henry Cartier-Bresson is to photograph what you feel. I like this particular image because I think we've all felt exhaustion before. This was his beautiful wife, Martine Frank. She was also a photographer. Um, downtown Manhattan, New York City is a place that is constantly moving and never stops. So to find empty and stillness in that city, I thought this was a great photograph. Um, one of the other things he taught us is to communicate reality. Um, here's an example of child labor inside a textile factory in Soviet Union. A couple sleeping on a train. And then to see the devastation of a fire that was in Hoboken, New Jersey. And then seeing details and not just the bigger picture. So here's a group of children that are playing amongst the rubble, which maybe you wouldn't normally perceive children to be happy and having fun, but they are here. Some workers that are enjoying a break from their hard days working. Um, I particularly liked this shot. He said he was visiting the museum and happened to look out of an upstairs window and saw the empty marketplace stark in its lack of activity. Um, a young child leaning against the wall. I think it's great whenever we can experience a moment where we're kind of free from our responsibilities and things that we have to take care of every day. Um, another thing that Bresson teaches us is to see the world as a painter. Before he started in photography, he actually went to school for painting and then he was inspired by the Surrealist movement as well. So a lot of his compositions have a very painterly feel to them. Um, I particularly like this one. It's very impressionistic to me. It's capturing a snapshot of everyday life, just a fleeting moment. And then waiting for the right moment to shoot with your camera. This photograph has some beautiful implied lines, a lot of different geometric shapes. He had to find the right thing that he wanted to photograph and then wait for all of the people to be in the places that would make for the best composition. Um, again, in this one, he would frame the shot and then wait for a passerby to kind of become an anchor in the photograph. Um, Bresson was a big believer that cropping photos was not something that should be done. So he was a big fan of geometry in an image and he believed that a lot of that integrity was lost when you would crop photos. And then I already mentioned that he was inspired by a surrealist art. So the next few images are ones where I feel you can see a lot of that original artwork that kind of inspired him. 
Um, particularly these from the World's Fair, you could feel like you could be transported to another place or time. And then this one with the airplanes as well, it just has a very surrealist vibe to it. And then he's known also for his portraits. Um, this particular image is one that shows that technical skills are only as critical as the story. Um, he had been in India shooting an interview with Gandhi and this particular image came after he heard that he had been, that Gandhi had been assassinated and he ran back to take a photo of the event when it was being announced that um, he had died. This image is slightly blurry as well, but it tells the story. Um, in China, there was a gold rush when thousands came out and waited in line for hours. Paper money no longer had value, and the government made a small attempt to keep people from crowding, but there ended up being 10 people crushed to death at this event. And then this last one in Paris, um, he said that the crowd was outside of Sacre Coeur waiting to see the Cardinal. People were shouting and from where he stood in the crowd he could only see the top of the Cardinal's head so he held his camera high above him and shot and this was the image that he was able to capture. And then Alberto Giacometti, they were friends. He was taking photographs of him in his studio. I particularly liked the way that in this picture, you see the artist Giacometti and he's mirroring kind of the same stance as a lot of his sculptures. So he was able to capture that movement that the sculptor had. And then just to finish up some of the portraits that he took, he believed that you should always capture the expression on the human face. And then you need to include the environment around the subject. If the photographer is to have a chance of achieving a true reflection of a person's world, which is as much outside him as inside him, it's necessary that the subject should be in a situation normal to him. Um, I loved this one of Matisse in his home. He was obviously comfortable enough with Brasson that his birds were about and you can really just get a feel for what that environment was from this photograph. Um, the third thing he said about portraits was to embrace the vulnerability. Um, he says that you must somehow position the camera between the sitter's shirt and their skin to really understand some of that vulnerability. So here's Truman Capote. And then every portrait is a self-portrait the photographer searching for identity of his sitter and also trying to fill an expression of himself. George Eisler. I really liked this one when I think about taking a photograph and seeing a piece of yourself in it. And then here we have an artist who's hiding behind a painting of a self-portrait. So I really found that one to be kind of fascinating. Albert Camus. And then lastly, when shooting portraits, above all, the sitter must be made to forget about the camera and the photographer who is handling it. And then this last two photos I wanted to share. So what do we communicate with photography? And Cartier-Bresson said, I believe that through the act of living, the discovery of oneself is made concurrently with the discovery of the world around us, which can mold us, but which can be affected by us. A balance must be established between these two worlds, the one inside us and the one outside. As a result of a constant reciprocal process, both these worlds come to form a single one, and it is this world that we must communicate. So what I take from all that is discovery about ourselves from within. It's externally evidenced in a photograph. And that's it. Thanks.